the ground. Lois Mongoy, NTV. On Wednesday, a rowdy group stormed the IBC's meeting with county candidates and property of unknown value was destroyed at the Kisi Agricultural Training Center. Officials of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission were meeting Governor, Woman Representative and Senate seat candidates when hundreds of rowdy youth stormed the venue in Kisi Town. The group arrived one hour into the meeting, disrupting the session, causing damage and inflicting injuries. A police officer was injured during the chaos that resulted in the damage of a police van. The group demanded the transfer of an IABC returning officer, accusing him of bias. Police were forced to hurl tear gas to disperse the crowd. <laughs> I would want to state that uh, for the IBC, they should ensure that uh, these elections are conducted uh, freely and fairly. And um, those candidates who are here, I'm told they, they were about six gubernatorial candidates and uh, many other candidates that are standing for various positions. Uh, let me ask them to conduct their campaigns in a very in a peaceful manner. Seven people, among them four county and national government officials in Kericho, were Wednesday charged in court over the legal awarding of a hundred million shilling tender to renovate the Kerenga airstrip. They appeared before the Kericho chief magistrate while a Nairobi, while a Nairobi court granted the anti graft commission orders to freeze the accounts of four national treasury officials over the embezzlement of more than 37 million shillings between January and June this year. Bridget Ngana has that report. The seven suspects appeared before Chief Magistrate Elias Makoria, the anti-corruption court in Kericho, to answer to fraud charges regarding the awarding of the 100 million shillings tender to upgrade Kerenga airstrip in Kericho County. Four national and county government officials are accused of awarding the tender to Jemororan Construction Company Limited in 2018, despite the construction company forging National Construction Authority certificates and certificates of completion of projects in Nakuru and Narok counties. Kericho County government officials Nelson Ngetich, a supply chain management officer, Evelyn Ngeno, an accountant, John Kiprono, a county surveyor, Josh Chirchir, an assistant road engineer, and Geoffrey Kibowen, a surveyor from the Ministry of Lands, are said to have received bribes and influenced the decision of the tender committee in the County Ministry of Public Works and Transport from David Rono and Jonathan Rono, directors at Jemororan Construction Company Limited. The seven were released on a 200,000 shilling bond each or a cash bill of 100,000 shillings. At the same time, ESCC has obtained orders to freeze more than 37 million shillings in the accounts of four national treasury officials said to have been fraudulently acquired between January and June this year. The four comprising of senior and junior officials at Treasury are believed to have wired 37 million shillings, 347,598.59 million shillings to their accounts at different occasions as imprests, facilitation and extraneous allowances within a six-month period. ESCC has now frozen the funds in their accounts as follows. Faith Kiptis, a senior finance and budget officer, 15 million shillings, Esther Ngeru, a senior internal auditor, 8.5 million shillings. Robert Murage, an accountant, 11.1 million shillings. And Doris Sumiu, an accountant, 8.9 million shillings. Bridgets, Ghana, NTV, Nakuru. All right, it's that time on AM Live when we look at what is on the newspapers, what is making headlines, and we start with the Daily Nation. Let me just zoom in closer so that we all get a clearer perspective. And uh, the front page story is Ryla vows to repossess Ruto land. Let me zoom in even further so we can get those details. And... Uh, in a letter to Lands Minister and Anti-Corruption Agency, Azmio claims the Deputy President irregularly acquired 2,500 acres in Tai Tataveta and wants the title deed held pending setting, setting up of a commission of inquiry. There's more detail on page 7, but the Deputy President's position... 
As I can see down here, the deputy president says he was gifted the land by former MP Basil Criticos after he assisted him to pay off a loan owed to the Agricultural Finance Corporation. Azimio's claims are that, uh, and those claims made by the Secretary General, Junette Mohammed, uh, that in a let and in a letter to the agencies are uh, that Ruto violated the Public Officer Ethics Act 2003 and the Leadership and Integrity Act of 2012. Uh, the threat, as the Mio wants land CS Farida Karone to preserve the status quo of the title documents pending formation of a commission of inquiry aimed at recovering the land. Uh, on the extreme right here, Kenyatta laments politicization of the cost of living, arguing it is unjust for those in positions of power to take advantage of the plight of suffering masses in their quest for power. I can see here hits and misses in Rigadi and uh, Karua exchange and uh, that is has that report that analysis has been undertaken by Masharia Gaido and we'll get to it in a moment Nat demands 60% pay rise for teachers a, they want a 60% pay rise a review of the 2021 2025 CBA and a promotion of teachers who acquired higher qualifications 4.5 billion shillings for teacher professional development program TSC to provide a clear grading system for teachers teachers in similar job groups to have equal promotion opportunities TSC to consider local communities when promoting teachers in semi-arid areas and uh, TSC to give job evaluation guidelines to SRC to guide the profession and uh, there is a special focus on the good bad and ugly of SGR service and that uh, that is on page two and three the SGR has of course been a hot political topic especially as the politicians contest for the coastal vote Unga Price Wars, Uhuru tells of Ruto as a hundred shilling deal signed. President decries unholy alliance between some errant millers and the political class. And uh, here's a quote from him as stated yesterday. To politicize the pains of the vulnerable without offering solutions is to mock the lifestyles of the same people that you want to vote for you. And uh, let me invite my panelists who've arrived this morning to weigh in on this reduction on the cost of a two kilogram pack of unga from about 220 shillings to 100 shillings. Uh, is the timing suspicious? Uh, both sides of the political divide seem to think so. Uh, the president says every election season, uh, the cost of maize a flour goes up, a pack of maize flour. And uh, on the other side, uh, William Ruto and his deputy, Rigadi Gashagwa, ask why did it take so long? Why is it now being reduced close to the election date? I'll start with you, Daisy Amdani. We're also joined by Jamatia Sergon, who is a member of parliament, Iala, also contesting the Baringo uh, woman representative seat, Karibu Sana. We're also joined by Esther. Esther, good to see you. Esther is uh, the MCA Gaturi Ward. Happy to have you as well, Esther Kamau, in the building. I'll start with you, Daisy. What do you make of this development on the cost of unga? You know, I wonder how um, short memories Kenyans have. This is exactly what they did in 2017, if you recall. And I wonder also about the millers, because uh, at the, uh, in 2017, they reduced the price. I mean, they subsidized. They mm -hmm. told the millers, you know, reduce the price and we will pay you the difference, which is exactly what they've done. And they took quite some time to pay the millers. Um, so it's superficial. Uh, this is really about the politics. Mm -hmm. There's no real price reduction here. It is a gimmick to win the hearts of uh, uh, or the votes. Let's let's just talk. They they want to win votes. They want to look like uh, they are a caring government. And I think if they were a caring government, that these are things that they should have forecasted way ahead of time. So it is a political gimmick. It is rep reminiscent of 2017. And it's only for how many days? 28 days. Yeah. Less. For 17. See now. I mean, so, so how is that? 18 days. Yeah. So, okay, think about it. Uh, you know, how, so, so what is that doing? So 18 days. So it's like, what, two weeks? They're about. Give or take? Yeah. I mean, it's, n it's, not, it's pure politics. And on both sides. I think uh, the deputy president is being disingenuous because mm -hmm. they did it. He was happy to do it in 2017 when they were running. Mm. So for them to now start uh, making a song and dance about it is disingenuous. Of course, 
they, of course, are on the op opposing side, so they want to score brownie points. Mm. But across the board, uh, whether it is at the executive level or the legislative level, the legislators, parliament has failed us. So anybody who is in parliament, any current member of parliament really shouldn't say anything because they are the ones who have mismanaged. They have supported the executive in mismanaging our economy to the, pr to the point that, um, if you recall, they are the ones who did away with the strategic reserve fund. Mm -hmm. You know, by law, we are supposed to actually have a strategic reserve yes. where we are supposed to have a certain amount of food to, uh, to, to buff the country mm -hmm. against such eventualities in the event of a drought, in the event of a famine, in the event of shortages, mm -hmm. so that people don't have to go hungry. The chairman of that fund was Noah Wekesa, who is uh, something or other in Azimio. Yes. They actually, Parliament actually moved a, a, a motion in, 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 in I, I can't remember what year, but, but uh, the recent Parliament, to actually do away with the fund because uh, somehow it was not working. So these are the questions that we should ask. Where are our strategic reserves? Why does this have to be a recurring problem? Because it's cyclical. Mm. This is an, it's a, it's a, it's a routine every election cycle. So it's nothing more than cosmetic. Okay. Jamatia, do you agree with Daisy? I agree with Daisy yeah, to some very level. And if, by the way, where I, I base my argument is um, the, the discussion around the Ukraine and the Russian you know, war that caused all this very high cost of living suddenly. Mm -hmm. But if the government was able to do this at this time because we are only few days to elections. Mm. It means they had all the powers to do it all along. Mm. So uh, suddenly, for the first time, um, the regulators, uh, petroleum regulators did not, uh, you know, add a shilling or so in the petroleum products mm -hmm. this time round because of the same bait. And it is very unfortunate because I really want to see what happens immediately after elections. Because mm. Kenyans, we will have no more eyes to run to. Mm. If you look at uh, the, for the first time again, the consistency of our politics is a bit changing because we've known Raila Odinga being the person who has been always so passionate on fighting on how uh, Kenyans are being, you know, uh, pushed by governments. But he is the one who is benefiting so much today, so he doesn't even comment about it. But the, the, where I come from, I realized as Daisy puts it so well, it is it is a page that Kenyans are are being customized to. Mm -hmm. That because you are getting something, I mean someone needs something, so they give you um, this price today. Mm -hmm. But what happens tomorrow? The same millers, I am very sure they are holding these products for purposes of you know two weeks after this, mm -hmm. and it's going to be very unfortunate because, and it's always unfortunate because. The leaders of Kenya, um, especially as Daisy puts it, that those in parliament did not take uh, the first step to use this as a stopgap. I mm. mean, to have a stopgap for us as we go forward uh, towards this election. Okay. And another thing is, when we were having the COVID-19, we were expecting such a very darling and you know service from government. Mm. But we didn't get it. But why is it that it's so easy to reduce unga from 200? I mean, the miller should be getting more in terms of either money or relief than the people who are, get, who are, being, who are going to buy this. Mm. If I was selling my products at 200, that is more than a 100% reduction, or over 50%. So there's a lot of um, political, uh, I mean, bait that is coming with it. Okay. That's what I think. All right, Esther, there was an attempt uh, to reduce the price a couple of days ago. It, it looks like it, it required the intervention of President Uhuru Kenyatta to finally get them across uh, the finish line. Uh, what do you make of these developments? Do you agree with Daisy that this is cosmetic? 
it's very cosmetic because when you look back in 2017, we had the same kind of issue. Mm -hmm. When it comes to fuel, they br brought the fuel to a very low uh, price yes. because there was actually going to be an election. So I think for the President of the Republic of Kenya, who we all look up to, I think being on the fact that you are telling us you're going to... Yesterday I was at the supermarket, mm -hmm. and I can actually say the unga is still at 230. Yes. Mm -hmm. So basically, I think it's a gimmick of games for for the government to be supporting uh, opposition and using this and using Kenyans and using Kenyans mind to kind of uh, twist and tell them now we're going to have a hundred a uh, hundred uh, Kenya shilling for unga what about the fuel yeah which we are really really in dire need of it to come down because of the prices of especially in terms of manufacturing uh, we're having a lot of problem with electricity right now you just put a thousand shillings and it's done um, I think there are so many things to look into mm. if you really uh, have the goodwill of Kenyans in terms yes. of a price reduction of everything. Mm. So we demand that if, the, uh, if Uhuru, being the commander in chief of the armed forces, has the strength to bring down Unga, may he also bring down everything that Kenyans are facing currently. Okay. So I do not agree with that. And uh, in the highest bid of uh, a Kenyan being a Kenyan citizen, especially being from the Bundus in Moranga County, I think that is just off the line. Oh dear, you call Muranga Bundus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maturi right. is actually a village. <laughs> okay, thank you. But we, it seems we, you all agree that this is a temporary yeah, measure yeah. Yeah. and, and long-term long solutions are required yes, yeah. uh, to this problem. Okay, so no more delay tactics of Bill Cortel's convicted leaders. The Court of Appeal has told off politicians convicted of criminal offenses who delay determination of their appeals so that they can use the cases to remain or contest for public office. The second highest court noticed, uh, noted, I beg your pardon, that convicts aspiring to hold public office were parking their appeals and using the pending cases as a card to be cleared by the Electoral Commission. Interesting story that, and that is on page four of the Daily Nation. Ruto and Ryla pile more pressure on IBC's transmission of results as Mio and Kenya Kwanzaa camps want to know how results from polling stations without network will be relayed. There's a quote here from Ms. Gladys Cholet. We want to know how results from the 1,111 stations will be transmitted to the National Talent Center. And uh, I believe, uh, let me just read this paragraph for you, that uh, Dr. Karu, uh, this is Caroline, um, Karugu, who is, I believe, the deputy chief agent of Azimio, and she says here that although Tuesday's simulation registered a 94% success rate, much more than the 58% uh, of the register, uh, beg, beg, beg your pardon, much more than the than the 58% registered in the first dry run, she expressed fears that the streaming will was still slow. If only 50 stations have transmitted their results in one hour simple maths means that kenyans will have to wait for about four days to get to get the final presidential um results all right next page this is page six ruto remove presidential immunity he says kenya kwanzaa alliance is focused on building strong institutions and uh he is quoted in an interview with sabc that is the South African Broadcast, uh, Broadcasting Corporation, are stating that countries that take their presidents to court because of corruption and we must take our country to that level. Um, Ryla vows to recover. Now, this is a front page story. Deputy President's acquisition of 2,500 acres in Taita Taveta has come under scrutiny. Ryla vows to recover grabbed land from Ruto. DP says that he possesses receipts for the land he owns and dares President Kenyatta to produce his the accusation is uh, that in a letter to the ministry of lands let me just zoom in here okay it's not cooperating but in a letter to the ministry of lands and uh, various agencies as Emil wants lands cabinet secretary farida karone to preserve the status quo of the title documents of 2500 acre parcel in taita taveta acquired by dp ruto pending formation of a commission of inquiry to investigate the matter which will be established if Mr. Odinga wins the presidency in the August elections. The DP had earlier explained that he was gifted the land by former MP Basil Criticos after he helped him pay off a loan from AFC, that is the Agricultural Finance Corporation. And uh, they further accused the DP of illegally requiring a nine Illegally, illegally acquiring, I beg your pardon, a 976 acre parcel from former Vice President Joseph Murumbi in Transmara. Daisy. Mm. 
<laughs> what do you make of this? You know, this politics of ours is dirty politics. Um, do they have proof that what the deputy president is saying is not true? Mm -hmm. uh, if so, we have due process, the rule of law, uh, you know, takes, should take center stage. So I think that um, some of these uh, accusations out there, uh, they're, not use, they're not helpful. Land is a very emotive issue. And, you know, when you start talking about, especially land in Taita Taveta, it is so controversial yeah. because there are some very, very big names at play. Yeah. Basil Criticos is still alive. So it is very easy to verify whether or not, indeed, he gifted this land, you know. Uh, if the other accusations of acquisition of land uh, were done through abuse of office, and we know that that is a common practice and has been for mm -hmm. several years, for, I mean, since independence, actually. Uh, the Dongo land report is yet to be implemented. Yes. So I would rather hear uh, Right Honorable Raila Odinga talk about how he will implement uh, the Dongo land report and address issues of land grabbing so it, so that you're not pointing at an individual because this is a it's it's a chronic problem in Kenya mm. and it affects very many uh, people who have used and abused their uh, the state offices and public positions offices that have been entrusted positions of trust uh, in this country to 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 acquire uh, huge swaths of land and have uh, become billionaires and this is since independence so for me this is political it's a, it's a it, this is a political statement you know and uh, as i was uh, telling chamatia here when we were <laughs> when we were talking earlier on is that i remember mandago once said that <laughs> mambo ya siasa usiweke kwa roho mm. weka kwa lans, lans. <laughs> yes. because tomorrow you see you incite people with these kind of statements you know that hey this is the thief and we are going to deal with them. Mm. But when their politics doesn't work out, these guys go, they shake hands. And it's very likely, from the way things are setting up, that there is a handshake in the offing. You know, so at mm. the end of the day, what are you going to do with now this, these seeds of discord that they have sown among you? So I think that our leaders need to prioritize issues of the rule of law and not make public statements, especially about emotive issues like land. Okay. Yeah. Jamatia? Um... First of all, I want to say we might not have um, handshake because we are, at least this time round we are going to win. <laughs> As a Kenya Kwanza, I believe we are going to win uh, first round. But that said and done, the issue of the land in uh, Taita Tafeta is just a political statement made by Honorable I mean, Raila Odinga. Honestly, if we want to talk about issues of land in this country, Today, I think the first name, there are, there are people in this country that you don't need to look for their titling and their names or their pieces of land. You just need to scoop Kenya aside and pick, you know, part of, a, part of Kenya and every part of uh, the rest of the Kenya is going to be their land. In, in a, the simplest way is, the, if you talk about title Taveta and land, we've been having issues of land injustices cutting across centuries, courtesy of the colonial and the Kenyatta family issues on land in the coast. Let's start from there. So when you talk about a small piece of land, which was actually bought or someone has it, I mean, it means if I go to Taita Tavet today and, and buy a piece of land, it has to be marked because it is, I mean, it's not somebody else who has the land. Mm. As, as uh, I'm done, as I just said, critical is alive. To use this as an agenda in politics is actually very wanting for as a new presidential candidate. Okay. Not only that, we have a lot of problems in this country. That cannot be an agenda of this matter. Because if you want to talk about uh, land issues, land issues has been very emotive, first of all. It's like trying to poke into a problem that is already there or um, some wound so that you can get the, you know, I mean, the, the pain from the person who is, who is being uh, victimized on this. Because I am, again, I cannot criminalize anyone who has land. If you want to talk about issues of land, go to Ndumu's report. 
it is so well articulated there that who has land, who acquired fraudulently, and all those issues about land. That aside, I am a candidate in this uh, election. And let me tell you, Kenyans are very specific on who wants to talk about their issues. When I hear people mentioning names sometimes, and uh, trying to put emotive issues on personalities and problems, uh, dealing with people's issues. It, it, it takes me back to when you go to the ground and you listen to people, people are so specific. They want food. And that is why, again, they are using food as a political um, bait because that is where you can only colonize at this time. Okay. And the, the high cost of living. Right. So I want to say, uh, first thing first, I don't think there will be any handshake. <laughs> because we are done with this handshake thing. We just want to do our elections, win, and go home. All right, Esther, <laughs> is this an attempt to play up the Arab Singh label? Um, uh, first of all, we are talking about land. <laughs> the Kenyatta family has a massive land. Eh? And I am so shocked that if our sports people go into Naivasha, they have to borrow land to do safari rally, then we start from that point. Uh, secondly, yeah. we have land issue. If they have to recover from uh, His Excellency William Samoy Ruto, then they have to recover from the people like Matiangi, who had a case of Ruaraka saga, that we never saw it come into play. So if it's about, uh, you know, re recovering grab land, then we have a lot to do as a country, because we will have a lot. And actually, uh, when I don't really want to speak for William Ruto, but I would also want William Ruto to take chunk of land from the family and give it to poor people and also settles the people who are affected by post-election violence back in Nebraska. Okay. That's my take. All right. So let's quickly get through the newspaper. Uh, Priscilla Nyokafi is expected at any moment. Uh, I imagine she must have encountered some delay on her way here. Uh, Kenya, UK and UN open anti-terror operations center. The 81 million shilling station has detention facilities and will serve as ATP headquarters. A picture here of Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi and British High Commissioner Jane Marriott during the opening of the anti-terrorism center at the Coast Regional Police Headquarters in Mombasa yesterday. And uh, moving on up here, uh, the, the spat between uh, the office of the DCI and the DPP seems to not have ended. Kinoti is not on my level, DPP Haji now says. And uh, supremacy battles between the chief prosecutor, Nurdin Haji, and top detective George Kinoti escalated yesterday when the former claimed that he ranks way higher than the battle-hardened sleuth. The director of public prosecutions said he only works with the inspector general of police, Hilary Mutiambai, who oversees the operations of the directorate of uh, criminal investigations. Um, reveals police shot Nakurutin five times over gang suspicion. Maribe fights off modeling as a trial comes to an end and uh, take homes from Gashagwa Karua deputies debate as I mentioned um, this has been penned by Mashari Agai though and he says it was evident that Kenya Kwanzaa presidential running mate was better prepared for a duel than his Azimio counterpart I think this is the last thing I'll ask you to weigh in on so that we can get into a discussion on how women in legislative office have delivered I'll start with you uh, Daisy do you agree with Mashari's uh, assessment that uh, Rigadi Gashagwa was better prepared than Martha Karua? Well, it, he came across that way. But then again, you know, I think that uh, it's important to remember that these are not the principles, okay? They are simply uh, the, the running mates. Mm -hmm. um, I do think, yes, uh, especially given the way he has been caricatured in uh, the media. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a way he has been presented in the, the oversized suit. Exactly. So, you know, yeah. I mean, he debunked that because he came very well. I mean, he was dressed really good. He, 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 looked, he looked good. I, I do think that uh, he came prepared to, un I mean, you know, like he really wanted to get in into um, certain areas for which he had prepared that he wanted to show his mettle. I do think that uh, he, he, he came across really well. 
Uh, Martha uh, was, she seemed a bit subdued. But I, I think it was also the expectation mm -hmm. that people had of her because there was this expectation that she was going to come out guns blazing and take him down and everything. And I'm glad that that didn't happen. Mm. Uh, that it was a very sober and a very calm uh, debate. I do think the moderators could have moderated it better, you know, so that we got more issues mm -hmm. out of it. Because I, I think that a lot of what Kenyans needed, needed to hear didn't come out. You know, it's almost like uh, the moderators were guiding for a spoiling for a kind of a fight, you know, mm. or a, a, a showdown, mm. which for me is not useful mm. because the kind of brownie points that we should be looking for people to, to score are about how they're going to deal with the pressing problems facing Kenyans, okay. which really didn't come out. All right. Ajamatia, do you agree with this assessment? Yes, yes, very well. Um, and I like the way it came out because... Um, the expectation, as uh, Daisy said, is, was was that mother is going to be, you know, the one to run the show. Of course, because of the hype that Kenyans is, and uh, and these things sometimes is very unfortunate because we consume so much until we get the real thing, and then we realize that uh, it's not the way we expected. Fine, but I want to thank and congratulate my deputy. Uh, I mean. In Kenya Kwanza uh, Gashagwa for the good work that he did. He, he, he didn't do, I mean, I, he's always like that. On one on one, when you meet him, he, he's able to give you a piece of, you know, he has a lot of issues and matters of Kenyans at his heart. And he was able to articulate it. Much as that, yes, much as that, we didn't expect the way the questions were, you know, put across mm -hmm. by the media. We were expecting so much of the issues, but it came out that there was some sort of, um, you know, uh, trying to portray uh, their personalities. You know, what did you do? Like the way mother was trying so much to bring up the issue of um, Gashagwa as a, a bit corrupt. You know, he has money in his account, wherever you got his money. So it's but it's not an allegation. He's facing charges. He's facing charges, but it was another way of <laughs> actually uh, criminalizing business in a way. You're telling me if you have money of this amount, you, you should not have. Well, how much am I supposed not to have? Daisy, you don't agree? Well, I think that um, uh, public officers or those who are seeking public office should be able to tell us the source <coughs> of their, their funds. Mm, I mean, it is true. you're in a country where you are lamenting that uh, youth, we have millions of mm -hmm. youth who are unemployed, but you are such an astute business person that you have been able to make billions from uh, business. Mm -hmm. So that business argument should actually translate to you showing these young people how to do business, assuming that it is not proceeds but of corruption. And I think that Martha was well within, well within her rights to actually highlight that because what we have right now uh, in the public domain and it's not an accusation yep. because until one is proven innocent uh, uh, you know the allegation remains but i thought it's the other way around innocent yeah. until proven no guilty. you are you are, you are you are innocent until proven guilty but it is there it is an allegation that has but, been made against you that you are corrupt and that the riches the wealth that you have the billions of shillings of monies that you have are proceeds of corruption so you are also put on your defense so i mean i i think it was it was quite in order for martha to to highlight that right? i still i don't i still think it was not um in order for mother to do that because first thing first the shagwa actually explained that he didn't have billions hmm. he had some 200 million or something and he gave out and lay out gave out a layout on how he got this money but that again this thing of prosecuting people in public domain is where we got all wrong because if you look at how the DPP and uh, the Haji are always complaining, it's because one is so quick to judge and prosecute everyone in social media and newspapers. So by the time we're actually consuming and getting it right from the court, we have already tainted these people. And it's very unfortunate because I am a Kenyan who wants probably to do business, for instance, and I don't want to look like Every time I have my money, I need to start somewhere so that people don't see I have money. People should be proud to do business 
and put their monies in the bank. A billion. It, it, assuming that is, it is properly no, no, no. acquired, it, it yes? It is always acquired. Let me tell you. You know, the imagination okay. that... So I'll a put a pin in this because we need to take yes. a break and we need to finish with the newspaper review. Esther, have the last word on this particular question. First, I want to thank the Media Council and the Media Fraternity for giving us this platform to actually see what does Azimio Lamoja have and what does Kenya, Kenya Kwanzaa have. Yes. It has and the most important is that uh, uh, we were able to see what does uh, us as Kenya Kwanzaa people have. He actually articulated very well about our actual economy. It's really down. I was so actually very uh, unhappy for Mother Karua to come on television and say that the fertilizer is costing around uh, 2,300 uh, 2, right. or 900, something of the sort. But when you go to Moranga, uh, an agrovet, uh, fertilizer is costing 6,000 and above, which is going to be an overboard for people who are going to have harvest. So personally, I think Gashawa did great. Karua uh, is a woman, and I'm happy that she was also given that platform. But uh, Gashawa outdid himself, especially when people say Gashawa is a rude person. But when you actually hear him talk, articulate issues in Kenya Kwanzaa, especially our bottom-up economic model, then we find Gashawa did great. And I'm happy that NTV actually gave us a 70%. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, Priscilla, you need to get here and, and hold forth for your the, your side of the uh, political uh, divide. Yeah. But uh, I mean, regarding Gashawa, did didn't appear to be too sure where career city is retailed either. We take a break. Uh, when we come back, we finish up with the newspapers, get into our conversation.